Zarari, I guess if you don't mind, I can lead off our introductions Do it for to us. It, man. All right, starting on your IG side, Invictus Gaming, the team that did bring home the title in TI2. Now looking to roam as a pact here. They know that uh, potentially LGD are going to be coming aggressively. They want to ward out this jungle and prevent Chuan from getting that farm towards his Blink Dagger. So before I head over with these introductions, we might see a clash right here. Ooh. Look at him go. It's like a West Side story. Again, they just throw on it. Nice toss. Pearl Strike catches on two. It's becoming a Royal Rumble in the jungle right here. As they throw it on the clap in July. Very, very low from this one. But Age Apparition has the bonus damage from Chilling Touch. And that is huge at level one. You see it go into town. He picks up that first blood on Ferrari 430. They follow up though and grab Yao. One for one trade right now. June now trying to get away on the Bat Rider. One more right click should be able to do it. The tether coming out. The extra bit of move speed. Can they get one more attack? And they can. Another kill coming in favor of LGD on the back end of that one. And holy moly, welcome to the Summit to China, ladies and gentlemen. LGD versus IG start hot and heavy. Absolutely. Uh, needless to say, LGD coming out way ahead. The Not only a two for begins. one trade, but getting the first blood. Uh, and the kills did go the way of uh, Ancient Apparition to get the bonus gold, which is actually pretty good news. That means Faith will start with boots. Always good to have your carries finding that extra bit of gold, and that's where Silar comes in. He gets the second kill, finds a double damage rune, and Gyrocopter will be pretty happy with that extra yeah. farm he's picked up. So they, they get the two kills, and they still get the Ooh. wards down where they want and block out some of these camps. And now Rubik with a couple of sentries. It's pressure on him to try to get him. He does scout out two with one ward. Very nice right there. Throws it right in the middle and quickly try to take him down, but ultimately two camps will not spawn at the start and he'll get right on doing the double stacks but back to what I was with the introductions before things got really aggressive right there IG gaming at the bottom it's going to be XI or Xi Luo. Xi? oh it's Luo L-U-O yeah yeah it's Luo of course I forgot Luo being their carry just Silly likes Willy. to rep his new lame it's going to be okay well help me with this one C-H Ch uh, oh it's Ch Ch Chismo Chismo that's right I should not have picked this team to introduce <laughs> I'm telling you what <laughs> Rubik but Chismo Mid lane, it's going to be Chuan. I got that one. He's playing your Sand King, but mid lane, uh-oh, here goes the pressure. It's Ferrari 430, and he's hustling away, but Chuan's going to be right there with the Burrow. He actually throws it out and catches it right there on MMY, and then he pulls back. But that does leave, of course, top lane. It's going to be June on your Batrider. Yeah, and he'll be headed to the off lane. Now on the dire side, we've got LGD. It'll be in July on the off lane. Faceless Void mid will have a dual lane. Siler on the gyrocopter. MMY on that wisp as we've seen. Up top, it'll be a dual lane in the safe. Yao on the Viper, and that'll be Faith on the Ancient Apparition. I love this matchup. We get to see a battle between June and in July. <laughs> the battle of the summer months. So stuff. The heavy, heavy start coming out from LGD, looking to take advantage of that one. They have in July soloing about going against just this two lineup as it's almost a 2-1-2 with the one being Chuan in the jungle, already doing his own double stacks here so that he can quickly propel forward and getting a hold of that Blink Dagger. So not too much pressure is going to be here on Faceless Void. He's going to be allowed to get some last hits in. He's already 7-2, so he's off to a very, very nice start here. He's got the poor man's shield and plenty of tangos to work with. Yeah, now one thing that you have to remember is that they countered that Observer Ward they had in this little entry path here. So would normally have some vision of the Sand King in July, playing pretty far forward, goes to that first value point and backtrack, so feeling somewhat safe. And getting all this early farm is actually tipping things even further in the favor of LGD. Batrider struggling a lot more in the top lane. He's found his level 3, but not really finding much in the way of last hits. And there is just an innate problem of having a Sand King and the Batrider on the same team, is that they both want to retreat to the jungle. So, one or the other. Uh, but uh, who's going to sacrifice that farm? MMY taking some heavy damage, but will be able to tether over to the lane. Big rotation from IG into the mid. There is a smoke from the two supports, but they won't find what they're looking for. As yeah. LGD get back towards the mid lane and they'll stay safe at least for now. Kind of un uncharacteristic to see some of these supports really go in early like a Sand King and try to get some kills happening but that's kind of IG's play style. They like to try to add pressure on early and uh, going against this kind of dual lane in the mid, it's going to prove to be quite trouble but he gets the clap out right now in Silo. They're going toe to toe but looking to come in from behind though. It's going to be that support duo. See if they scout anything out. It's going to be MMY oh. under pressure. Burrow at the same time of the tether. He does get away and they quickly spread out the courier just in case but it is going to be the Wisp who will fall. Yeah, fade ball from the Rubik there to finish him off. Almost lives with that quick tether. Would have been quite the getaway. And now the Bat Rider will just steal these stacks in the jungle. Finds a nice triple stack on the medium camp here. Some Satyrs, some Ogres, some Centaur. It's a whole mix of races. And uh, he'll be able to get some beautiful gold. Ancient Apparition at least leeches some of the experience. So 
Um, well, making Valverde's life a little more difficult, but these rotations from IG are certainly costly. Going the Wisp is great, but now Silar, this is what they needed to make it worthwhile, and they'll find another one. Silar just a bit too far forward as he gets telekinesed, and IG. They'll start to uh, regain some momentum here and try to get back into the lead, but already at a thousand gold and experience deficit. In July, is just persistent on Luo and forces him to just get the hell out of here and tosses him back as, you know, he is just eager to go toe to toe with him. He has a favorable matchup right here going against Tiny for now and is just really looking to take advantage of that. He's second as far as CS, 18 and 5 on your offlane void. Ain't too shabby, but that's more or less because of IG doing this very aggressive momentum towards this mid lane on their supports and they're still there. You see the Rubik lingering nearby with that in. Is rude, just waiting for an opportunity to maybe make something happen, but he doesn't have any sort of regen to work with. Yeah. So I'm still curious who's going to get uh, all this farm that's hi hiding the Radiant Jungle. Only a double stack in the hard camp, but certainly will be stacked up a little bit more. Bat Rider, uh, boots in a bottle, so now the farm for the Blink Dagger begins. And the Sand King, only 400 gold towards his Blink, so neither of them really farming too well. Well, these early ganks did help things out, but uh, Chuan putting a lot of stock in these rotations to pick up kills instead of farming in the jungle, and this is just risky. It means he really needs to make some kills happen to make this worthwhile. June will move into the dire jungle, so being pretty efficient here, but I feel like this is just very risky and potentially punishable by LGD. We'll be uh, double stack in the hard camp, so find some decent farm out of this as he stacks up the sticky. And I like this play. I think they know this is happening. It's just typically what happens when you have a Wisp in the mid lane is that when he has the opportunity, he'll either check out the runes or move into his own jungle and make those stacks. Usually it's the Tony in the mid lane who's going to venture up there and take advantage of it. So IG know the game plan is going to be relatively similar and they move as a pack into there and they take away all that precious stack farm yeah. that they're expecting to see and Batrider is one of the best at quickly cleaning it up with that Firefly even early, early on with only a couple of skills in each. So I think it's a fantastic play for them so they capitalize on taking advantage of that farm on the opponent's side and they still have their own jungle to fall back on. Yeah, what's the cost here though? You've got in July just free farming the bottom lane. This offlane void is already level 7. He's going to have his power treads up pretty quickly here and Viper was just free farming in the top lane. He'll find his level 6, a thousand gold in the bank so if he wants an early mech, uh, right around that 10 minute mark is certainly not out of the question. You're just looking at the overall income. LGD kind of breaking even on gold at that 1,000 deficit, and now they'll rotate on the Yao. Do they have the damage to bring him down? Wand charges, buy him some time, but the Primal Split is there, and he'll live for now. Ancient Apparition coming in, throws out a Viper Strike before he goes down, and now Faith, he'll actually get stunned up, and he can end up falling as well. Chuan just barely lives with a haste rune on, and it'll end up being a 2 for nil. So this is really going well for IG. Meanwhile, on the top, can they get the kill on June? Yep, they sure find it. Wow. As they interrupt that camp there, and uh, Wisp going to secure that one with his little balls. That long ball grab right there, able to take down the Bat Rider with the last bit of damage. Very nice grab for them because IG is putting on a clinic here in the mid lane. They're really taking it to him to get a couple of fantastic pickoffs, and just after taking that jungle, and they also have that aggressive obs ward up and nearby, they're going to see any sort of intel of movement or other additional stacks they could try to take away from them. Yeah, it was uh, in July who was advancing on that bottom lane, so they're going to take that bit of early beefiness he has and put that towards the mid lane to try to contest Ferrari because it's clear that Gyrocopter is not having as easy of a time, and now him and Wisp move towards the top lane where they, f they hope that they'll fare a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Stellar's so going for the early Aquila, now just uh, looking for the power treads it looks like. So yeah, just trying to come online, get those core items up. Uh, same story for the Faceless Void. Ferrari has found some decent recovery off these kills. 3-1-1 one, now with 1,600 gold, so he's going to have his well-timed Blink Dagger. Bat Rider still only 900, so his going to fall a little short, and same with the Sand King. Working on a triple stack, so that will help out Chuan's farm a bit. And finally, slowing down the tempos, giving up on these ganks, feeling like he's gotten enough out of it, and we'll just uh, focus on the greed at this point. Tiny also find his, finding his level 6 in the bottom lane. He does go for a bottle. So Luo looking for a little more mana sustainability without that Wisp to overcharge him. He'll have to find other avenues. He might find himself dead in a moment because we got a nice little smoke gate coming out from LGD. In July is itchy with that R trigger finger. He would love to put use this chrono. They're going to scout and see Leo right there. We'll see if they jump in. They do. They jump in. They pull out the chrono and the ancient apparition pulls out the chilling touch. So he's got some nice right click. The Viper Strike going to be there, but here comes the rotation. They quickly toss back in July. They can't quite finish off Lua yet. They eventually do take it down. Ferrari moves on in, but he does not have the cooldown power yet to pull out the primal split. And he might have to double back instead. He's got nine more seconds, and he has to quickly use his bottle to get up the mana to use that primal 
Primal Split. And maybe with some additional help, he could go for a counter initiation, but it's not going to be here in time. So LGD instead get the quick assassination there on Luo. It's successful smoke game. Yeah, great gank. Because the Enchant Person that gets the kill that time, that finds his level 5. So one step closer to getting the big snowball. And meanwhile up top, Silar and MMY just pressuring this top tier 1 tower quite hard. The call down from Silar used to clear up the creep wave. And Luo's the one to TP in, but he needs to be somewhat careful. And if it does have a combo, but oh, Silar big action mid lane. They oh. jump. Yeah, they get a nice lasso that currently catches out Yao. And Yao is going to be in big trouble here. But it is Rubik who ultimately gets quickly jumped on. And, well, he ends up going down to the hands of In July. No one better. He desperately fireflies up and above the Bat Rider, able to get away from this one. But the homing missile is already out. And it's on fire right now. But it's going to be too far before uh, it finally does connect. So ultimately, they take down a quick snack support with that good rotation towards the mid lane where pressure was coming. And the jump in lasso, unfortunately, is not going to get anything done on your Viper. So. Batrider ultimately not able to get it done until he probably gets that Blink Dagger, which he's still a little ways away from. 1,300 gold. It's already 9 minutes and 30 seconds into the game. He has a quota he desperately needs to meet. Yeah, Chuan at just about the exact Dyer's same mark. 1,300 gold on him. Attack. Tiny going for the phase boots. A very interesting choice. You almost always see... Uh, the power trends, of mm -hmm. course, uh, Tiny gets a lot of benefit from that attack speed for that effective DPS, but it's that gap closer that I was talking about. I was thinking maybe a Blink Dagger, but the phase boots do allow him to get in position a little more easily yeah. and uh, get in there to get off those right clicks. We could still see him build on this even more, go for drums, maybe even a Blink Dagger, and go mm -hmm. with that kind of a style because it's not your yeah. usual with Tiny kind of a lineup where you would love to just get more and more attack speed to work with, but you know we'll see how Luo decides to build this one up because it's a bit unorthodox. It's He's put into a team in a position that normally you wouldn't see a Tiny in. And now they're going to smoke up, press on forward. They have Ferrari leading out the front. He does have the Primal Split and his Blink Dagger ready to go. They're going to quickly scout the duo. Jump in, clap, catches. Long ball toss on your Rubik. Gets a nice Telekinesis and your precious Gyro Core goes down. And look at this ball. We'll throw him up in the air and we want to take him down right now. Arch Nemesis now. Tony gets his own with friend. And they get a nice pickoff right there. They benefit from a two-man takedown off that gank, but it might not be over yet, folks. In July, he does get his Chronosphere taken away after he takes down Chuan right now. And let's see if he tries to use it and maybe isolate at least the Viper. But for now, they got to get a nice Telekinesis. He does leap out from this one and gets away. Yeah, Rubik doesn't have the mana for the Chronosphere quite yet as Yao will create some space for his friend. Ends up as a one-for-two trade, so still a valuable kill for LGD. Obviously not a good exchange, but slowing down the Blink Dagger on the Sand King that much more. And glancing at the graph, it is IG that come out ahead in July, moves into the jungle, and will start pulling up that gold towards his Mask of Madness. Unless, is it out on the Courier? Nope, just the TP scroll. They're looking for that recipe, and uh, Tiny is finding some okay farm now. The phase boot's coming in handy, has himself the drum, or the, the bracer, so it looks like he will follow suit and possibly go for that drum that you were talking about. Man, Batrider brought in from some farm really quick. I felt like I was just looking at him and saying he had 1,300 gold at 9 minutes and 30 seconds yeah. in, and he had gotten his Blink Dagger about a minute ago. So yeah. somehow he inherited a lot of quick farm. It could have been through the jungle and then bottom lane, which was clear and available and open up to him. So now he's got it, and he's waiting to use it as he is planting himself much far behind in this top lane position. Chuan sandstorming it up and Luo is going to be by their attack. side, but ultimately a nearby lurking in July waits. They could look to pull the trigger on him and quickly take down this faceless void. Mm -hmm. Chrono down for 45 seconds, so not going to have too many options in terms of that getaway vehicle. And uh, yeah, IG will start to converge. Bat Rider flying around the side. And I don't I think he's revealed the Blink Dagger. Yeah, he's walked by this ward, so they should have seen it. They'll ping out this top lane, and TP's coming in as in July may be the target of choice. Yao does have a mech, so even if they catch him in the lasso, they'll have to bring him down very quickly before he mechs up to safety. The nice thing is for this bat is LGD didn't pick up anything to really counter bat. Except for a Chronosphere, you're not going to stop him from getting the quick cave nap. And if they do manage to grab Faceless Void, Radiant's no one else is really available to stop him from getting attack. everything off. Once he gets Dyer's his four staff, he'll be able to quickly isolate attack. someone, and there's not much they can do about it. Mm -hmm. Now, Wisp does find his level 6, basically, as we're looking at this exchange up top. So, if IG come in, there could be a relocate. This gyrocopter is farming down in the bottom lane, and we'll have that taxi service as all five heroes of IG are grouped up at the top. Ferrari with his Blink Dagger, Primal Split at the ready, coming around the backside. We'll zoom out and kind of get a feel for the positioning here as the Void. He's going to be the aggressor. They'll go right in onto the Tiny, out on the back. Faith gets jumped on, but Tiny takes a lot of damage, ends up being the first to go down. There's your relocate from the Wisp, brings in the gyrocopter. 
Gyrocopter, uh, the ultimate from Chuan, not really doing much damage. Still gets a Burrow Strike onto the Faceless Void, who is caught inside of the lasso. And it will be a two for one to get things started, but now Chizmo in trouble, goes down to the Wrath of Sywar, and the rest of IG just looking to make the escape. Ferrari does go back into brew form. Chuan connects with a bro strike on two, but now making the escape may be a bit more difficult. There's your rocket barrage, and it ends up being a great fight for LGD, trading two for three, and the Bat Rider barely gets away. Radiant's nice grab, good rotation, taking attack. advantage of that relocate, pushes him up to the top. Yeah, um, Ferrari came in from behind your ancient apparition, but he had already gotten off his ice blast. He'd done his duty, and so he had to go shortly thereafter. But after that, it was just pretty much all Radiant's LGD being able to get things fallen. done, and now they're going to take advantage of that big team fight and they move on and get a hold of a tier one tower not too shabby if i say so myself but just kind of add to a note what i already said because once i finished my thought about they don't have much to counter the bat rider lasso you talked about wisp and I'm like oh yeah wisp is fantastic for that just a quick you know immediate close range relocate could also help out with the lasso grab so that's, that could be something they look out for but look out for luo as uh, he's gonna get right click down ice blast is gonna fly on in and he's gonna be potentially shattered apart right now, but they're going to go for a counter initiate right now on to Yao, who is getting quickly isolated, but they can't quite pursue him, and in June, he eats that homing missile, but here comes Ferrari, he's looking to go on in, he's got the blink dagger about to be ready, as they want to jump on through and finish out Faith, and they do, he takes a thunder crap right on his head, and the Iceman goes down. Yeah, Faith going in very deep there, making some space for his team. Really unfortunate for LGD in general, as the Viper Strike was still on cooldown for about two seconds, as Tiny definitely would have shattered if the Viper Strike hit him, and uh, maybe one more auto attack from the Viper, but just couldn't do it, was forced to use that valuable mana for the mech, and uh, then couldn't secure the kill. So a very noble effort from LGD, and a close call at that. And uh, Viper will be close to level 11, get that Viper Strike on a shorter cooldown, and that situation probably won't happen again. And IG will get a couple of pick-me-ups here, and regain a little bit of that lost momentum following the uh, the unfortunate skirmish in the top lane just moments prior, but LGD still holding on to the lead. Will be Silar going for a BKB first yeah. item, halfway to the recipe, but uh, really powerful item pick up this game. Of course, Lasso still goes through it, but still a ton of magical damages and crowd controls. Uh, that Silar will be mitigating yeah, with the Burrow machine. Strike, Avalanche, all that stuff now won't be able to stop Gyrocopter from getting focused. But they go, Jesus. oh, he's still persistent here. Wants to drop the call down, but Chow, or Shuan rather, is going to be able to get away from that. Smoke Ink, though, coming in from by in July, does have a Chrono ready to go right now. If they scout out Rubik, they might just go right for it, and they do. They get a nice aggressive Dyer's ward, they see him, Cold Feet follow up. This is going to be quick work, and your Grand Magus will quickly hit the deck, but. Yeah, man, the thing is, is if they want to use that lasso on Gyrocopter, the problem is, is if Injuli has his Chrono ready to go, that might ultimately be a big, big problem for them. So I really like LGD's game plan right now. They send a big ice ball up to the top range, but there's not going to be anyone okay. to catch right. But they jump right in in the front, they're going to hold a Luo, and Luo is going to get caught out and taken down again. 11 to 11 now, LGD tie things up as far as kills, but I feel like the momentum is still very much in their favor. Yeah, they get so much more out of that. They get the Tier 1 tower bottom, they defend their top tier one without using the glyph plus they get a kill not only just adding the gold to the gyrocopter but shutting down the position one of ig now june coming in on in july ferrari here with a thunderclap but in july will hop back flame break will scoot him back right into the uh, brewmaster who has committed a split for this and they find the kill on the faceless void but hey in the mid lane viper as well as uh, the gyrocopter lock down the sand king and it's a one for one Radiant's across the map so they don't walk attack. away empty handed and uh, looks like lgd will just try attack. to trade tower for tower. Yep. They quickly go for it. Only fortified. Ferrari in the top lane has a TP available if he wanted to go for some sort of defense, but I'd imagine they're not, so this is going to be also a tier 1 handover to LGD. Yeah, they lose a little bit there on the top and the tower as well, but still not too shabby. We want bottom lane. See Lilo trying to scout out. Oh, Avalanche just comes a little too late, and that does allow Faith to have a little bit of faith as he gets himself out. Faith with the footwork there, just juking and jiving in the trees and you know, just barely survives. But now your BKB is up on the gyrocopter and one issue with going BKB first is that it will get down to that five second charge pretty early on. This isn't one of these games where Silar will have the luxury of just being able to hold on to that BKB uh, forever. He's going to have to use it in these upcoming fights, but hey, maybe that 10 seconds of magic immunity will be enough for LGD to really get a lot of momentum and get him towards that next core item pretty damn quick. Yep. It's the uh, one value point there in homing missile, trying to zone back and be able to scout out where Ferrari goes as he quickly gets himself out of there. But I have to agree, man, this is an opportunity for him to really open up, and now he can decide to build into that precious, precious 
damage build that he would love to go for, whether it be a, you know, Manta-style rival Yasha, MKB, Satanic eventually. It's going to get ugly real quick if uh, IG cannot slow their roll because as the game progresses, it's only going to get better, I would imagine, for LGD. Yeah, MKB, I think, a pretty valuable item this game. Manta's great against the Drunken Haze also, but just to cut through that Drunken Brawler, mm -hmm. uh, definitely good stuff. And also, as you pointed out, just great raw damage on the Gyro Copter, which synergizes very well with the Flat Cannon. Ferrari 430 will go for this kind of quote-unquote old-school build on the Brewmaster. Blink right into Aghanim Scepter, and mm -hmm. this build's really fallen off in popularity. You'll see Brews much more Dyer's commonly now go Blink into just attack. the utility aura items. Vlad's AC items quite like that as they yeah. just benefit the team so much more. And the Ags gives you a little bump in the mid-game, but towards the late game, it really just falls off. I mean, I can understand where he's coming from, really. Who else is going to benefit from it except Luo on this Tiny? And it's not going to be adding a whole lot of additional tactics. Meanwhile, though, we're going to see a jump in, in July and the relocate to come on in as they lock Chuan in place. Tron quickly falls, and now they Tender attention towards Rubik. Double man takedown. He quickly gets the steal and throws up his own, and it does lock both the LGD in place. So, can they make this uh, to their benefit? A nice leap in Lasso catches that Siler even through his BKB and looking to open up his Ferrari. They do get quick damage there, though. And Rubik with that buyback, he comes right back into the fray. They ultimately take down the Ancient Apparition. Viper barely lives. He's getting assistance from MMY right now, but not going to be so lucky there as Ancient Apparition will end up falling. Rubik falls again, and this is a huge turn right now. LGD. Unbelievable. And ultimately, only Ferrari to live using the primal split, but MMY is right there to keep him alive. The self earn just keeps the sustain very much real, folks, and he makes his way out. And it looks oh like IG can't quite get something, but Ferrari's desperate. If he has to get a ball, so be it, but nope, can't even do that as his primal split will end. That fight was so devastating for IG here, Dakota. That was a 4,200 net worth swing. The Wisp survived after taking all that damage. A double dieback for IG. Both supports, the Rubik and the Sand King, bought back to get into the fight, died again. And we were wondering if that 10 second magic immunity for Gyrocopter would be enough to do some work in that fight. And I think it's more than paid for itself already. All of a sudden, a 5,000 gold, 3,000 experience lead. And Gyro doing so much much damage in that exchange. Now 3-3-8, three, three and eight. Stylar definitely feeling pretty happy. Yeah, I mean, given they did try to lock him down, so most of that BKB duration was used on him not getting anything out of it, but still, it's just a fresh BKB, a lot of time to work with, and he also got to be able to put out some big, big damage. And he was laying in some pretty serious right clicks. Flight yeah. Cannon and the Rocket yeah. Barrage, all that combined. And Wisp did a great job keeping everyone alive, especially the Viper, so he yeah. just was there to add the extra bit of oomph, so everyone had the durability to, you know, have a nice strong fight presence throughout the strong duration of it so yeah mech's yeah. so good when you're tethered up as well get that double heal on your tether target oh uh, yeah when you're in that close knit quarters so that's just so much sustainability from lgd and also just mech versus no mech makes a huge difference we'll see up top we'll the line, goes in on to luo and uh yeah there's going to be plenty of damage to bring down the tiny he'll get completely shut down and another freebie for LGD. Well, and it's not the first time I've seen a team try to do some sort of counter pick and it really doesn't work out for him. But here we go. Jumping Ferrari wants to get hold of it in July, but they can't stop him from getting the time walk out. And it looks like June is not going to be quick on the trigger to try to get the lasso off. And in July, barely skates away from that potential disaster gank. Down bottom, Chuan could find himself in a bit of a sticky pickle. He's in the sandstorm. The ice blast just barely misses him. They've got no way to interrupt it and uh, no detection either. Uh, a little bit unfortunate for LGD. A pretty big opportunity as he had just used his burrow strike aggressively on the creep wave, but said they will be repelled. The bad rider's on his way and has a lasso, uses it on MMY. Interrupts the TP and will pull him back to the danger zone. Now telekinesis, they'll find a pick on the spirit. And, well, a little freebie there. Not the end of the world, but still, June will get a little bump of the gold. like how Rubik does steal the tether. Uses it briefly there for a bit, but ultimately, we'll step back and probably look for something else and fresh to use. But, man, oh, man, things are looking pretty pretty right here for uh, Silar. Gyrocopter continues to farm up in his own jungle. Has 2k gold reserve already to use. And uh, we already talked about some of the uh, possible item progressions here. We'll just have to see what it will be that he steps into. For Faith, he's got the early makings of his Agnum Scepter and uh, working towards getting that level 11 so he can get at least the level 2 slap. But right now, he's going to get slapped in the back end as he quickly gets bursted apart. Gets the quick uh, Ice Blast off. Uh, in case maybe they wanted to relocate him, but that's not going to be the case. But still, Ferrari taking advantage of finding any sort of weak target, he can at least get some extra golden XP off of and gets a nice snag right there in the AA. Yep. So this uh, Brewmaster denied. Ultimate is pretty damn powerful right now. Has the Aghanim Scepter completed. So like you said before, this is a, a huge bump for him here. And uh, the next maybe 10 minutes or so, maybe 15, the Ferrari 430 Brewmaster is a force to be reckoned with.
four, one, or eight, one, and four, pardon me. So a big streak to his name also, soon to be level 16. Chuan finally gets his blink dagger. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, Three they missed the chrono on oh. the bottom. In July, jumps in, tries to get a hold of Luo, but this time he's not going to be so lucky. Luo, thankfully, able to quickly retreat out just in time, and the chrono will not catch. He probably didn't have proper vision and just kind of assumed Luo was going to be there, but ultimately it's going to be a whiff. Well... You win some, you lose some, and uh, and IG know this. They know they don't have a chrono, so they're like, let's push bottom and at least get this tier one, boys. Yeah. Now look at this gyrocopter though. He's got a demon edge, so probably just going straight for that MKB. Once that raw damage, and wants to try and shut down that brute best he can. Yao caught inside the lasso to get this one started. In July goes in, BKB on. We'll just start throwing out the right clicks. June gets viper struck, and now they'll do a lot of damage to the tiny. He's the first one to go down. June flies away on the high ground, but now the split from the panda. He's just going to get clicked down. This earth. Panda on the run, but only so much space for him to go. He's going to die, and it's going to be an easy double for the gyro as LGD, even without Chrono, take a pretty convincing team fight. Yeah, this is big. I really don't know at this point what IG are going to do. Tiny is clearly not being able to amount to anything. He did get a hold of those drums, but he's desperately trying to throw together at least a Yasha to get a little bit of extra oomph for him. But right now, you got to remember, he has very, very weak base armor, only five now with the additional plus two bonus. And that's not going to be able to stand a whole lot to the heavy right click coming his way. I mean, already Faceless Void doing a fair, you know, worthy amount of damage. Viper on the other team as well just makes it so hard for a Tiny already as it is. He cannot kite about. You know, he's getting kited about very, very easily. He can't catch up with anyone. It's just an easy right-click succession coming out from him. And plus, you have Siler with the tethered, you know, MMY next to him with the heavy, quick right-click and the huge, huge damage spread. I, I just don't know if IG have anything to really contest all this heavy, heavy power. Yeah, and unfortunately, Chuan's Blink Dagger was just so late. 23 minutes. You want it around the 10-minute mark, so you can control the tempo, set up space uh, for your other carries, and... Move around the lane, shut down the opposition, and here Chuan just hasn't been able to do that. Uh, one, five, and seven. He's he's had somewhat of an impact, but just not as much as you would hope out of a Sand King who had as much space as he did early on. Ancient Apparition will smoke in the dire jungle. Uh, he's solo smoked right now, but perhaps looking for an opening. Does uh, Luo's in the mid lane. Not going for the Aghanim Scepter either. Dyer's Luo now just picks up a Yasha after the Drum of Endurance. So it's built uh, kind of all over the place here where he's got the damage from the phase boost, getting some attack speed, but he just hasn't really been able to do anything in these team fights. Can't really get off the auto attacks and can't really get off the combos to much avail either. I suppose the move speed just helps him not get kited too easily. The additional agility helps with his armor a bit, and obviously he wants to right click a little bit quicker because he already has Radiant huge huge base uh, damage as it attack. is but I don't think that's going to be nearly enough his bottom lane LGD continue to add pressure on this tier 2 Dyer's no one's nearby to contest whatsoever attack. they are going to lob the uh, ice blast ball all the way up to the other side of the map towards the top lane where Tron is currently hiding out in the Radiant's woods and will possibly be scouting out but for now they Dyer's get that quick tier 2 tower they double attack. back for now Silas item progression is going to be an MKB huge huge damage on him now on this little flimsy pilot man because now he uh, the Ferrari. Now he gets hit right now. Big damage coming out with the Epicenter and Lasso, but oh, there it is! The counter relocate! Nice stuff from X Factor, MMY, to get the quick save on Silar. Yeah, beautifully done. Two big ultimates utilized right there and just rendered completely ineffective. That's the power, the defensive power, I guess I should say, of the Wisp and LGD. Just feeling good in general. Now with the MKV up, this Brewmaster, much less of a threat, not nearly as tanky as he was, and what do IG do here? I feel like the gold lead is not that significant, but they just have such little momentum and they get no way to really take these team fights so easily. Who's oh. getting who here? And it's going to be oh, another chronosphere that well, was a little unnecessary, but hey, they get the Rubik anyway, so in July, he needs to slow down on the caffeine a little bit, take a deep breath, and just a Rubik. Yeah, just, just a Rubik, just and he didn't Rubik. even hit him with it. He was like, take right it on easy. The he might have been able to right click him down, but I guess Fearsome that maybe Faith could have ultimately fallen, but that's not. It's not going to happen. It's, it's just a quick support for a support skirmish in the bottom of the river. Ultimately works out in favor of LGD once more. Mm -hmm. Zoning homing missile right now. Going to scout out the bat and force him all the way back. This does prevent him from being able to blink anywhere, so that's a nice grab while Tron presses down the lane instead. But still, we're wondering... Will Silar fall, but I don't think he's going to be falling a whole lot more this game. Yeah, I don't think so either. 5-3-9, yeah. he's off to one hell of a start. And oh, oh, Chuan in some trouble. Attack. He gets scouted out. We'll be able to blink over the ravine, and he'll be all right this time. Couldn't get any damage on him to interrupt that blink dagger. Meanwhile, Dyer's in the bottom, Tiny doing a little bit of split push. We'll move into that tier one Dyer's tower. Glyph comes out from the dock straight away. 
Ferrari looking to defend the Tier 2 mid, but LGD doing a little bit of split push of their own. They'll head down bottom to try and contest the Tiny. They keep the tower safe, but Tiny will TP out as Silar TPs in. And that'll be the end of the exchange. Neither side really going to be able to do too much in the way of tower pushing mm. as IG smoke up, move through their own jungle, and they're on the aggressive. Radiance they move to the bottom, they take advantage attack. of this push towards the tower, and they'll farm this up a bit because they're expecting to relocate whenever a team fight might come, but the team fight might be coming their way. They love to get hold of Silo here, jump in, lasso, and uh, we might see he tethers actually to the catapult here. Uh-oh, that's a bit of a misplay there. It looks like from MMY, and now he might be under trouble here as Silo just pops his BKB, and he's trying to get some serious right click off, but jumping on in is going to be your faceless void, and he moves way past and onto getting a hold of that Rubik, who should be able to fall right now, but Silo, more importantly, right, cl uh, right clicking down the rest of these bears, and ultimately, they do also take down poor bat rider so that's not going to work out either another unsuccessful game gank attempt coming out from ig how many of these are going to happen before ig feels like that this might be the end of it the yeah. end of the road it's exactly right where the gold graph still isn't that out of control now 7500 gold and experience but it just feels like ig can't take a team fight and oh, they're uh, going on LGD top having some fun with their food before they finish oh, it oh luo can he get out before the homing missile comes in yes he can all right yeah nice heads up play there and uh, that is one problem with this combo no way to interrupt the tps but sidelar will stay up top 2100 gold up on him now and Viper, knowing his limits, just stands his ground against uh, that Bat Rider and chopped him down, letting that Nether Toxin go to work. Has his Aghanim Scepter. Viper Strikes maxed out at uh, level 3 and 2400 gold on the Poison Bird. We'll see where he wants to go next, uh, but he's already hitting hard and you know, soon to be harder. Moving up is uh, Ferrari and Chuan hand in hand here to look to scout anything out, maybe see if they have a lingering Silar. He doesn't have the primal split to work, work with. He's got another 18 seconds, continues to move through. He is going to scout out Silar here, but he's taking all those creeps so quick. He just moves from camp to camp to get them all done, and they're not going to scout anyone out. And he's going to quickly be able to regroup with the rest of their team, and they're going to figure out what the next game plan might be. Faceless Void does have Chrono ready to go, and it looks like he's building the early makings of his Maelstrom. And this is going to be a nice grab as he picks up a bounty, and I would imagine maybe they consider congregating as a group, making a push happen because we still have a little while before Roche is going to be back up again. Yeah, Tiny with 3,200 gold. If he wants the Manta, he'll be able to pick it up pretty soon. But, oh, in the mid lane, we'll see. Again, there's some serious hate for this Rubik. I, I hate lie. magic. Yeah. <laughs> the Grand Magus, he gets chronoed and chopped down once more. Uh, I guess a worthy use of the Chronosphere. Just a single pick, and we'll see how LGD want to move off this. They'll just chip at the Tier Dyer's 2 tower mid. Tower. and. The rest attack. of IG spread around the map. You've got Luo down bottom, Dyer's finally bottom finishes tower. off that tier 1 tower, and Chuan, he's just having a dance party in the dire jungle. I mean, why the hell not? He's lingering nearby, but obviously not with his team. But you always see constantly Dyer's MMY and Gyro tower. close by attack. each other's side in case something does to break out, they can relocate. But just like that, Sadler heads towards the bottom lane, and MMY is going to have to take the long road towards him. And, uh, Mid lane by perspective, they're gonna jump right on the Viper at that same point. Pull out Primal Split, they want to quickly burst him down. They even use the Epi for this one, and he does go down, but they quickly relocate inside. They want redemption if possible, and he's doing huge damage. Quickly takes down the Bat Rider, so they do get the redemption, but Ferrari moves on through, takes out the other support, and they look to be possibly on the hunt here. As in July was about to use his time walk, but quickly gets cycloned up from that wind bear in the back inside. Oh, and God. also Ferrari takes down the Wisp. Nice work there from Ferrari to clean out those couple of supports after the back end of that Viper takedown. Now Silar all by his lonesome. He might fall. BKB going to be popped. He's trying to right-click anyone down if possible, and he does indeed go down. Ultra kill. They're not done yet. Toss forward. They want in July. They're slowing him down with the Drunken Haze, and they're on a hot hunt right now. They want redemption, and they're going to get it. Rampage for Mr. Ferrari 430. Huge comeback for IG as they get the full five-man wipe. And I, what I would imagine is a huge gold and XP swing. Yeah, no doubt about that. The team fight recap, Dyer's not going to be completely tower. comprehensive, but at least 4,000 gold net worth, if not more, going the way of IG and Ferrari. Just putting so much work in with this Aghanim Scepter. Now transitioning into the aura base build of the Vlads into the AC. But just a chaotic fight for LGD, and that Faceless Void might be thinking twice about using that solo for the Rubik in the future. Nice blast taken, and he uses it right, and they take him down. This is getting a bit sloppy now for LGD. That fight was a hot mess before they tried to desperate relocate to save that Viper, and just one at a time they went. They didn't have all the utility that they would want and no Chronosphere to really work with it, and they thought they were going to have the upper hand in that one, but now they hand over at just that is just carry on top now with a little AA pickoff. 
And now Rubik has an Ice Blast to work with. This is pretty nice for IG. Yeah, definitely. It's only a level one spell steal, so I won't have it for any more than three minutes, but still some nice snowballs he can throw around the map. Now, IG just got so much out of that word tiny. What does he have? A full BKB out of go with his Yasha. So Luo starting to hit a little harder, also gets his level 16, and uh, that's the full Assault Karas off Ferrari. Oh, you saw that Wisp, man. He got hit by the double thunderclap at the end of that fight, man. right before Ferrari was going back into brute form, and then took a crit to the face, and poor little Wisp just couldn't handle it. So I think LGD still in okay shape. They just need yeah. to tighten up a little bit, recognize that their power is in their team fight five man, using the Chrono to catch more than one hero, preferably not a support, dump all that damage into it, and that's their bread and butter. Instead, they try to get a little too fancy, and... A lot of little individual skirmishes there and let the Brewmaster really pick him apart rather than yeah. focusing on the Obviously, strength. LGD, I feel, still have a much stronger lineup as the game does progress longer and longer, but the pressure's on IG to really take advantage of that momentum they were just given, take advantage of all those additional funds and invest them in something big, something that they can be able to bring this game back, whatever it may be. And that's going to be also some pressure on Luo because he's going to be the one to try to bring in those huge right clicks. He's got his own BKB, still just the Yasha, but he's got to make some bigger item investments if he wants to contest. Silar on this gyrocopter who now has the Reaver, which I imagine is going to be the early part of the making of a Satanic, and that's going to be crazy. Yeah, definitely. So it gives him so much more sustainability. If he had a Satanic in that last fight at the end before he went down, definitely could have turned and lasted a lot longer. So a smart choice here gives him that sustainability, and even Wisp on his way to a BKB and only 300 gold off the recipe. So good news there, and in July did pick up a Maelstrom following the tail end of that fight. So not all bad news for the Dire side. Still finding some pretty serious item progression in Faith. Level 11, uh, 1,700 gold away from his Agonims, but now Chuan, all that farm in the jungle paying off as he finds his Veil of Discord. Huge item pickup this game, a lot of magic damage on the side of IG as we've talked about it, and uh, will bump up this damage a lot. Duration is long, and it does even work through BKB, even though, uh, so once BKB does conclude, that extra bit of magic amplification is going to come through. They do know that the uh, Spawn is getting a huge Ice Blast right now, and they're trying to take advantage of that, and they quickly take down AA again, man. AA is not happy with Ferrari whatsoever. He has had his number all game long, and he is still on the hunt. These bears are hustling. The necessities are very much real. The Bernsteins are moving through town right now, and they want to get a hold of something. One. They do take down one bear, two bear to potentially go down as well, and he saves the earth bear way behind just in case things get ugly because Siler has a DD, and mm -hmm. you don't want to go in on that. Yeah, the ruin of many wins on the hand is in the hands of the gyrocopter. MMY will have his BKB completed and flying out on the courier now, and almost enough gold for that satanic on gyro, but we're at that stage of the game where Silar may want to just be pulling for buyback before he invests in that big item. Even with the Aegis of the Immortal, better safe than sorry, as uh, he is the big damage dealer. Chuan now caught in a solo chrono from in July, and it looks like he'll have the damage to bring him down solo. A close call as Chuan was just about to have the space to burrow strike away but uh in july gets one there and well good pickoff but now chronosphere on cooldown for 90 seconds and perhaps something lgd need to be wary about there's your gap closer on tiny though and he'll pick up the blink deck yep i like it he'll be able to get into the fray and away from any potential danger you know whereas if he tries to move in and get the early viper strike you know he'll have a hard time getting anywhere oh we try to get one out right there Luo will double back instead as they now begin to add some added pressure here, but can't help but feel like, man, Gyrocopter with that overcharge, it's just going to be still so, Radiant so rough. It's going to be hard to break through. He's already starting to unload on this tier 2 tower. Take that creep! Stop it! There's Luo as he throws in that little critter, but they're going to need a whole lot than a little critter throw to try to stop him. That's quick blink right there, and that's a one of the best utilities you can get, avoiding that Viper strike because he's been the prime target from Viper for pretty much the majority of this game. Yeah, two big item pickups here to, before this tower goes down. The BKB on Viper and now the full Satanic onto the Gyrocopter. So LGD still finding a lot of item progression as they take out the Tier 2 mid. Only one outer tower remaining for IG. And they'll rotate up top. Ferrari's farming away. Has a blank and TP scroll. We'll use both of them. Hops into the tree line and comes back to safety. So they'll catch up with the creeps and uh, press into the basher top lane oh okay. ferrari he's like i need to bring something to the table now boys i need a right click that can really help out a bit aa is gonna have a harder time now <laughs> just 
I want to make sure his life is a living hell. Uh, for sure. It's, it's funny that the, the, the Rubik and the Ancient Apparition have been like the two most prime targets this game, where they've just been focused so hard. And yeah, it's, it's a tough life for a position five in a match such as that. Rubik being like a Kronos all day. King right click down. AA has been eating the wrath of Ferrari and just both just very, very miserable. But it's attack. been pretty much the same for both sides. So we're at a stalemate as far as supports go and, and how much they feed. So yep. moving down from the north, though, it's going to be LGD. They want to get another tier two and clear out the last outer tower on Radiant's the side of IG. We only have two more attack. minutes before this Aegis is expired. LGG know that, and they want to make a fight happen. Dyer's hmm. bottom yeah, it looks like this tier two attack. up top will not live to tell the Radiant's tale. That's the end of the outer towers. Fallen. Still all three tier two standing on the side of LGD. Tiny doing a little bit of split push, does have a couple of TP scrolls, and we'll have to head back pretty soon as it seems LGD want to get aggressive here. They'll press forward towards the Radiant's base. No buybacks available attack. on anyone except the gyrocopter Dyer's who also tower. has the Aegis. This is a pretty scary time for IG as they don't have a glyph either. June will grab Silar. Viper Strike comes out. He uses the BKB. Silar still holding onto his. Wants to save it until after the Aegis it would look like. As the Tier 3 tower taking a lot of damage. IG is actually Radiant's in top pretty big trouble here. Attack. They're going to have to initiate this sooner rather than later. Huge execution. They need to make sure they do this right. They were trying to maybe expend his first life quickly. He's been you know obviously he's saving the Satanic. He's saving that BKB for when he does come back. Radiant's Casual Avalanche is going to be thrown on out, but NY is going to make him really work for this first life, and Viper's constantly there on the side, and they're trying to question where Face was voided. He's waiting in the far back line, so then when they do make the jump on Siler, he'll be right there with that Chrono, so they can't do anything about it, and their Radiant's Rax is just crumbling down before your eyes. Beautiful positioning from LGD. Radiant's they know exactly what to do, and they're just giving IG no options. Radiant's they know if they jump in on Siler, it's half the base. In July, though. I'll capitalize, but yeah, you're right. There's still the Aegis uh, for at least another minute. Still no Glyph for another two minutes, and they're just going to rinse and repeat onto the mid lane here. Silar does get flame broken back. They ping him out. It looks like they may want to hop on him now. Blink Dagger on the tiny. They've got another lasso and LGD. They'll just play it safe. They back it on up here. And yeah, this is time to grab the creep wave. They, they don't want to risk that when the fight does break out, he does not have the Aegis. And yeah. he assumes he does and he doesn't use his BKB like or his mechanic. Left. Yeah, it's like, okay, let's just not risk it this much. We'll wait for the Aegis now to officially expire. We'll make sure we all have the money and the necessities to have buybacks available in case things do get ugly. And that'll be our time to go. And there you go. The Aegis does drop. He'll see it here, hopefully, as he does smoke. And they move as a group together. He does have the buyback available and so does Viper now and uh, Luo just with gets him. his. But. Tron's up top with no TP. Oh, oh no. This could be a huge opportunity for LGD to take a 5v4. Kron, it's a whiff! Uh -oh. Well, that'll be the end of it. Well, well, we're done here, folks. we got to pull back. Yeah, this is not the time we need to push, and they got to run. And for IG, they're like, go, oh, boys, this is our time. We used the Chrono. We blew it. we got to get a hold of them, and they're flying on through. This is their time to push on forward, and Chuan's like, yeah, I knew this was going to happen the whole time. I didn't need to be there. Chuan's like, yeah, boys, yeah, no TP. Don't worry about it. I was, I was on my way to the side shop. I would have made it in, you know. Yeah, it's okay. But uh, all right, it ends up working out for IG, but they yeah, still they lose know. a lane oh, of air. DD's going to be here. It's picked up by Ferrari. This is IG's stance. They just, they're now on the hunt. They're like, we got to get someone. They don't have a chrono. This is our opportunity to make it happen. We smoke up and we spread, boys. we got to figure out where the hell they are, and this is our opportunity to really open up on them. And for LGD, they got to stay as a group. we got to get the buddy-buddy system online. Everyone, take a hand. Don't go too far from your partner. You know, have a leash. All right, if you go out on your own and get picked off, they're going to be in our base very, very quickly. Mm-hmm. A lot of tier twos still standing, so IG don't have the best angle to attack. Smoked up, double damage soon to expire, but uh, they're going to put a ward down in the base, hoping to find someone, but glancing at the Radiant Vision, they get absolutely no intel. Meanwhile, LGD, they're down bottom, and looking for this kind of funky wraparound play, keeping IG completely in the dark. 15 seconds, they have Chrono back, and now they're like, okay, we can start heading towards the area. We know that they're somewhere in this area, so we'll just go ahead and move on through, and now that we're going to have Chrono near and available, we're feeling a little more confident and comfortable, so it's going to be now. In July, he's going to be the fullback right now as he stays behind and waits for an opportunity in IG. I think their window is closed as far as the potential to make something happen there, and they're going to pull back towards their side because top lane was taken apart, and that creek lane is going to be pushing quickly down. Yeah, I think LGD will probably just wait out for the next Roche. Uh, it's th Roche number three, so they'll have cheese to go with their Aegis, and they've got the better Roche lineup. Um, Batrider can be there to kind of snatch the Aegis. That's one thing he excels at. But with the Chronosphere, with the Gyrocopter and that close proximity, contesting the pit will be difficult for IG, and I think not a bad strategy just to wait it out, especially given how well it worked last time. And I don't see any reason why they can't just rinse and repeat and do the same general strategy, baiting with the Gyrocopter out front and keeping that Void in the back.
uh, to hop in if they actually initiate on the gyro with two lives. Yeah, but, you know, how long do, do IG wait before they consider an all or nothing? I think this LGD is just going to play it extra safe and wait for the Roche. They're going to linger by the pit, yeah. wait for it to pop on up, get the benefit from that extra life, and maybe Ooh. IG say that's their time. That's their time they want to contest and make Refresher it happen. Pressure void. Uh, I, I whiff this time, I'll have another one ready to go. That's what he's saying. It's Don't huge, worry, though. boys. I've got two. Chrono makes or breaks these fights easily because, you know, he just lands one without having Siler in it, and he just quickly takes out the team. Mm-hmm. Uh, on top of that, Ancient Apparition picks up his Aghanim Scepter, so another huge pickup that IG will have to deal with in this upcoming fight. Uh, Roche, uh, middle of the road respawn, about a minute 40 past the initial timer, so they'll have to hang it out. And, um, well, just be a little patient here for another minute. Four plus 375. He has enough. Okay. You know, he has to be cautious about using some of his other abilities. Doing, doing that math there for the, the uh, math is so terrible, everyone knows this, but it's close. As long as he doesn't, you know, carelessly give away a bit of mana, doing something else. I mean, even the Mask of Madness is 25 mana. I think he just has enough to be able to do a time walk and a double chrono. Mm -hmm. Should be fine. And they're just lingering by this pit. They're waiting. They want to get a hold of that extra life. They want to get a hold of that nice little cheese because it's Gouda. They want to be able to move on through and just put a lid on this game. Yep. They've been reckless once before. We can't have that happen again. No, certainly not. And, um, yeah, with the int power charge, yeah, it's going to be close. But he does have a pretty tight mana pool. Don't worry, they've got Wisp here, though. He can overcharge and give him a little bit of mana regen and uh, help him out. So Roche up here in less than a minute. And there's the Wisp playing his little piccolo, sounding the alarm. He uses his illusions. Oh, what a perfect rune to have for this situation. Now they have these mobile wards they can use to scout out as they move into the Roche pit. Let's just take a moment to appreciate the Radiant Vision and how little of it they have. They've got one ward here in the Radiant Jungle and one in the Radiant Base, and both their observers are just giving them zero intel right now as LGD will move into the Roche pit and, and look to put pressure on the Radiant yeah. side of the map. And Those rewards will hopefully catch LGD being careless after they didn't have the chrono there in the mid lane, but ultimately it's yeah. not going to work out for them because now they don't have proper vision at a time when they desperately need it. And that's near the Roche pit. And it's up now. LGD are going to go to town on it. And yeah, it looks like good. IG are just going to have to hope that their high ground defense for the next set of racks is going to be enough to stop because if this fight goes bad, it's pretty much game over. And I mean, now Gyrocopter has an Eagle Song, no, enough Sean gold for the full butterfly the if he wants it, but again, may want to pool for buyback before they go straight up into the base, even with the safety of that Aegis of the Immortal. And nope, okay, he's going to prove me wrong. He goes all in on the item, and there's your full butterfly. So that with the Aegis plus Cheese on the Void. Uh, and oh, wow, the Cheese isn't on the Void. I thought with the Refresher for sure it would be his, but they give it to Yao on the Viper. So he'll have essentially a second life, and I'm not sure how IG are going to hold this here, Dakota. They couldn't do it last time, and now there's a lot more scary items out on the field and sure they've got a basher now they've got a four staff on Chuan but nothing that compares to a butterfly on your copter a refresher on the void and an agonims on the ancient apparition now, I hate to be a mechanic models. drop and be like I haven't seen this too often but wouldn't you want a cheese to be on your wisp and don't wouldn't he benefit himself and whoever he's tethered to to get full life instantly yes that is uh, that is a little mechanic that they could benefit from but uh, I guess prioritizing the viper as well oh, all that thought is Silar gets jumped on lasso back and he'll just be able to go right back to safety. Look at this guy right here. BKB's used. They're going in onto the pandas. Fire panda's already gone down. And it looks like the blue ones can fall also. And oh, this could be bad news bears for the panda. The bad news bear has fallen. The streak is ended. Tiny does get the kill on Wisp as the relocate goes through. Buyback used onto the brew master. But LGD, they'll be kind of okay with that. They use, they force out the glyph and take the tier three tower. Now in July coming in, oh! that's one of the blueberries whiffed. One whiff. Uh -oh. All right, there you go. He's refreshed. refreshed. He's got another one. He doesn't have the mana to use it. Oh, unfortunately for this go around, needs a little bit more, about 30 more mana. Oh, oh poor in July. <laughs> but the pressure is on and everyone's gonna love love that one in two minutes. Uh, yeah, as as they've said, the, the Lotus Sphere. I think we've seen that word in chat more than more than fan straights, believe it or not. It's a rarity. And they pull back, and I guess they're just going to wait for MMY to be here. They definitely benefit a lot more from having that overcharge uh, in, in, in tandem with your Silar Gyrocopter. Yeah. They Still have plenty of time to work with on their Aegis, another at least three minutes, I would imagine, yeah. before it's going to expire. So they can wait it out a bit. Exactly. He'll have plenty of time to farm up on the side and secure a buyback if that's necessary. 
And uh, then they'll probably go for another swing towards the mid lane. Brew does have a little bit of time, 20 seconds till the uh, Primal splits up, so they're banking on the fact that hopefully LGD don't push in before that. Yep, and all things considered, still a great trade for LGD. Essentially, they lose their Wisp and the refresher cooldown in exchange for a dead Brewmaster, forcing a buyback, the Glyph, as well as the Tier 3 Tower. So still a lot going in their favor, and now they can execute that last strategy where they can basically just focus the barracks without a glyph here, and that forces IG to commit probably sooner than they would like. Still a huge window of time on the Aegis. It's only been, uh, let's see, about three minutes. So still two minutes to go, and they can kill Brew again. I feel like that's almost GG territory. I mean, he's oh, their big damage be. dealer, and yeah, he's only got one life. I believe so, and they're going to put Siler up in the front. He has the Aegis. He's got two minutes to work with. They get another last. Pull him all the way back. They're not going to reserve the... They get it. Wow, that long-range tether brings him all the way back in, and now it's pressure for Ari. It's more Deja Vu styles. He moves on in. He already loses one bear, but Siler begins to unload. Hasn't popped his BKB or Satanic yet. Doesn't feel necessary in this first flight. This Chrono does catch now, but it also catches Siler, unfortunately. A little burrow epi on Silar alone, but now he pops a satanic, and it's as if he took nothing. He brushes that sandstorm right off his shoulder and moves on through it quickly, cleans out the Chuan Sand King. No problem whatsoever. And now Ferrari, this is the last draw for him. Your BKB will be popped now. He doesn't need to wait for an Aegis. He's looking to end this one flat out. Luo pulls out a TP right in the middle of everything, and he's able to get away. I guess he doesn't get too lucky, unfortunately, as the uh, MKB won't proc through the BKB, obviously. And Gets on out. Yeah, ends up falling though. So a three for one here, and Siler moves his attention towards the bottom lane where he begins to now begin the right click on this tower. He's probably got one more minute left on this Aegis. Yeah, Tiny picks up a Dagon here. That's kind of uh, saying GG without saying GG, I think, at uh, this stage of the game. Aid gets jumped on by Ferrari. Luo, or pardon me, Yao gets hopped on by uh, June. <laughs> They get a kill on the Ancient Apparition and do kind of clean things up a little bit. Sarlar will hang around, finish off the tier through tower, and he's basically just going for Megas here, though there are still some structures standing in the mid lane. Sarlar chipping away at the structures as best he can. Blank from Luo goes in, has the tiny co or combo under the Wisp, finds the kill there. Now Sarlar. They might not finish him off. They're going to wait until the Aegis expires and then maybe make a go on him. He's very low as it is, and it's got to be like, what, 30 seconds left? I'm not sure if they're privy to the timer. They'll bring oh! him down okay. just in the nick of time. Ooh. He's coming right back. Back up. Yao's on the backside, has a BKB available, already used his cheese, and they keep Silar alive. It's a 2v3 with BKB used. Ferrari taking heavy damage. He's gonna get shot down by Silar, and he's good. Now Luo, he's low on health, he's on the run. Rubik will just get chopped down, and they're just way too big. GG should be coming out from IG before too long here. Is there a void? Oh, get on this chrono. Zones out Luo. And yeah, that'll be Mega Creeps. Now the throne is exposed, and LGD. They'll take the win, and uh, there you go, in July. Just throw the chronos out willy-nilly, have a little fun with it. By dominating Luo moves on through, but this is it. They're taking the throne, and it looks like it will be IGG. Yeah. So, I don't know. I have to say, I feel like we sort of called that a little bit with uh, the drafting style uh, against the Wisp. The casual Tiny is just, it's not that strong right now. Very powerful with Wisp, but one of those heroes that doesn't stand on his own two feet nearly as strong. Yeah, and definitely not been able to contest a gyrocopter who gets in near his final form.